guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna do a somewhat different video um, it's gonna be about traveling tips trips hacks things that I have learned along the way I have been in and out of town basically at least one to two sometimes three times a month uh, pretty much every single month for the last two years or so so I have been on a lot of airplanes and taken a lot of trips and I have uh, learned some things along the way. If you want to see any more other travel type things like uh, maybe like what I keep in my carry-on or what I pack in a carry-on or what I keep in my bag or how I keep myself entertained, yada yada yada, whatever. Um, if you want to see more travel videos, then go ahead and let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, that's it. Let's hop right in. So let's start at home when you're still packing and stuff, okay? So first and foremost, you need to have a good suitcase. Now if you're going to be carrying your suitcase on and you know you're always going to have a carry-on and it's always going to be a carry-on suitcase, you're never going to check it. Um, then it's not that big of a deal like what color it is. I have a white one for the spring and summer and then I usually have a black one for the fall and winter because I like to be a little darker that time of year. Um, but uh, typically if you are going to be checking your bag a lot, a black suitcase is just going to like, it's just, it's not what you want because if your bag ever gets misplaced or anything like that, Telling somebody, oh, I have a black suitcase, I need to find my black suitcase, boo, that's gonna be real hard. But if you're like, hey, I have a, I have this hideous, hideous Tommy Hilfiger suitcase that is all brown and it has the Tommy Hilfiger stripe down the front. Like, I remember I lost it one time and I was like, oh, oh, here, let me show you a picture. Which is another thing, feel free to take a picture of your suitcase just in case it does get lost when you check it. Now, with suitcases, make sure that, I mean, they still sell the suitcases that only have two wheels. Make sure you're buying a suitcase that has four wheels. It really helps to be able to wheel that little mug around. And when you're buying a suitcase, wheel it around the store. I will go to the store and I will take a suitcase. Like, I'll buy my suitcases a lot from, um, like from TJ Maxx or from Marshalls because I can get like a Samsonite suitcase, which I love, and I can get them for, you know, half the price or whatever if I, you know, instead of going to like Macy's or something to buy it. So I'll grab that suitcase and I will walk around that whole store for a solid 20 minutes. I'll be throwing stuff in the suitcase. I'll be spinning it. I'll be running with it. I'll be like, uh, my favorite way to push a suitcase is actually when it's completely upright and I'm not tilting it whatsoever. So I make sure that that suitcase is going to work for me. Make sure that your suitcase is going to work for you. And my personal preference are the hard shell ones because I've noticed that um, as long as you don't unzip it and give it that extra width, which you know you can do that to make it a little bit wider, um, as long as you don't do that, those suitcases are always going to fit in the overhead bin. Unless you're in a small plane, in which case nothing's gonna fit up there and everyone's gonna have to gate check the bag anyway. But typically, um, those ones are more likely to just be able to slide right in because you're not altering how big it is. Whereas if you have the regular uh, cloth kind, then you are going to be able to stuff it and stuff it and stuff it and stuff it and then you're gonna sit on it, you're gonna zip it up, and you're gonna get there, and you're gonna realize that this weirdly shaped suitcase doesn't fit in the overhead compartment, and you're probably gonna end up having to check it. So avoid those fees, find yourself the right suitcase. Now when it comes to packing, I'm sure you guys have heard this many times before, but roll your clothes. I was always like, roll my clothes, who cares, why am I rolling my clothes? I like constantly am out of town for at least four days and I have no problem fitting four days of like day outfits, night outfits, shoes, hair, makeup, accessories, like all kinds of craziness. I can fit all of that into my suitcase with no problem along with my laptop, along with all kinds of other stuff because I'm rolling my clothes and I'm making sure that it fits into one compartment. Along with clothes, um, you guys have heard me talk about Gwenny B in the past. So if you don't know what Gwenny B is, it is a subscription service where you can, um, you can decide how many pieces a month you want to have or how many pieces at a time that you want to have and you can sign up for free there's a link down below uh, for a free 30-day trial if you're interested in trying it but the reason that I love using Gwenny B when I travel is because one I can get new clothes that I do not have yet new outfits and stuff so I can be out here all in the town because like when I tend to go out of town I usually take pictures and stuff because I'm doing something different than my everyday like kind of life thing so I know I'm gonna be photographed a little bit more or maybe I'm going to an event like in New York I'll be at event after event after event event after meetup after event after party after event <laughs> and I know that there are gonna be a lot of pictures and so I definitely want to have some new cute clothes to wear so with Gwenny B I went ahead and I ordered a few different like lightweight dresses because I know that you know I'm gonna be traveling so I don't want 
any outfit to be too bulky plus it's nice and warm outside so I can get away with wearing dresses like every single day so I went ahead and I ordered this really cute red dress that I love it's really nice like I feel like it's perfect for the daytime or it's perfect for the nighttime kind of depending on what shoes I wear and then I ordered this super cute like butterfly dress it's not really my style but when I saw it on the model I was like oh okay I kind of like that I like the neckline on it and then when I got it and I put it on I just felt like I was ready for brunch <laughs> and whenever I'm in New York or traveling anywhere period my favorite like time of day to go eat is brunch and I love doing Sunday brunch in every new city that I visit it's just so exciting like you get to eat weird eggs like quail eggs what's up with that I had that in Houston they were fire <laughs> And then the last going to be outfit that I decided to try out was this super pretty like pale blue uh, top. It's really delicate, really feminine. And then this bouncy little skirt. I love the length of it. It fits really well. I thought it was a really cute combo and it's just super easy. And I love that with each of these outfits, I do not have to wear any kind of like extra like undergarments like Spanx or anything like that. And all I really need to have is a good like strapless bra and whatever panties I feel like wearing. So I took all three outfits and I rolled them up and I stuck them into my suitcase and they fit really easily. And the best thing about it is that I can just pack the return bag because with Gwenny B, you get the stuff, you wear it as long as you want. You don't have to wash it or anything and you can just throw it all in the blue bag that they supply you and it has return postage on it already. And most hotels have some kind of postal service already. So you can just stick all the clothes in the little blue bag and you can just mail it off straight from your hotel. That way you have added space in your suitcase for your return trip home and you don't have to carry home any extra dirty clothes which I absolutely love so these clothes will be going with me to New York they will not be coming back home to Chicago again if you want to try out Gwenny B there will be a link down below in the description box and you can get yourself a nice little 30 day free trial now another part of packing I've seen a lot of people talk about putting your shoes into a shower cap first of all I usually pack a lot of shoes and second of all I don't own a shower cap so my solution for this is just to keep all your clothes in one area and then keep your other stuff like your cosmetics your toiletries all of that stuff keep that in a different area and this is especially easy when you have a hard shell suitcase because it's split into two separate sections so I can completely zip up my clothes and I can keep those safe and away from everything else anything that might spill or anything else you can completely keep them separate and then I just stick my shoes on the other side no need for a shower cap like I don't care if my shoes smell like my makeup or my makeup smells like my shoes you know what I'm saying now let's say it's time for your flight so my flight is in just over 24 hours and the best thing that you can do first of all is download the app for whatever airline you are flying on are you flying on American download the American app are you flying on United download the United app whatever airline that you are flying with download that app to your phone and then put in your record locator number which is usually like six letters or a combination of letters and numbers it will pull up your uh, flight information and 24 hours beforehand you can check in now here's a little trick that I have learned when it comes to checking in so I used to just check in kind of whenever because I mean I was like whatever I don't care like I would just make sure I checked in a couple hours before the flight now I love flying first class okay I don't love paying to fly first class sometimes I'll do it and when I book my flight I'll buy a first class ticket instead of buying the economy ticket but a lot of times what I do is I make sure that I have the app for whoever I'm flying typically I fly American that's kind of like my jam <laughs> I really like their terminal because the terminal it's in terminal 3 at O'Hare Airport they have a Wolfgang Puck restaurant and the bacon wrap meatloaf is so good <laughs> like I make sure <laughs> I make sure that before every flight I always go there and I have lunch or I have dinner I drink my little Bloody Mary and then I go on to my gate so like no lie I fly American because the food is the best like in the terminal at O'Hare so you know I have my priorities but I do really really like flying first class but I don't love paying for it because it is usually three or four hundred dollars more than economy so every now and again I will just go ahead and pay for it because I know that I'm gonna be on a really long flight and I don't want to take the chance of not being able to sit first class but what you can do is if you've downloaded the app and let's say like tomorrow for instance my flight is at 12:50 p.m. so at 12:45 p.m. today I'm gonna make sure that I have that app open and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and I'm refreshing and I'm gonna make sure that as soon as it says I can check in I'm gonna check in now there are two reasons that you want to do this the first is if you're flying economy the faster you check in the sooner you check in if there are any empty seats in first class 
a little thing is gonna pop up on your screen and it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna upgrade for, usually I've paid typically between 40 and $80 to upgrade to first class per flight, which is significantly less than the $400 that I typically pay when I just buy it right off the bat. So I'll sign in, like I will check in at 12.50, okay? And I mean, I already bought first class for this one, but um, I would typically, I would be there right there at 12.50, I would hit check in now and then it's gonna pop up and it's gonna say if there's any first class seats available. It's gonna tell me, hey, there's something available, would you like to upgrade? And I'm always like, yes, girl, you know I wanna upgrade. You know I want my little warm nuts and my cranberry juice while everybody else is boarding. You know I got wide hips, you know I'm trying to be extra comfortable on this flight, like, come on. Now you're definitely gonna have a much higher chance of getting the option to upgrade when you check in right away, those 24 hours prior, versus checking in a few hours before your flight. Now if you are an economy, and you don't get the option to upgrade or you have no interest in doing that, then you wanna make sure that you're checking in those 24 hours prior or 23 hours prior, whatever it is, because then you're gonna have a better selection of seats. Those seats fill up fast, okay? So if you wanna be in the aisle seat because you pee a lot or you wanna be in the window seat because you know you're gonna be trying to go to sleep, then you're gonna wanna check in as soon as you possibly can. And now another perk of having the app on your phone for whatever airline you're flying is that when there are gate changes or there are time changes or there are any kind of updates, then it'll be right on your phone. And you will get your ticket right on your phone, typically. Every now and again, there might be an airline, like a little sketch airline, where they don't do that. So these days, pretty much every single time that I fly, I have all my tickets right on my phone. I never have to go and check in when I get there. I just walk straight to security. And now I have TSA pre-check, which is so nice. So not only do I walk straight to security, I walk to the super short line and I get right through. One more thing about checking in. If you're doing it really, really late or you're like one of the last people to check in for your flight, just know that all airlines to overbook their flights and so there are lots of times where hey everybody showed up for the flight and they don't have enough spaces for everyone on the plane so those people that check in last those are the people that get bumped if no one volunteers to take the voucher you know for another flight or whatever so just make sure you're not the last person checking into that flight and another fun fact what I learned from all these different airlines is that the max voucher that they can ever give out is $500. So if they're offering 500 and you don't care if you're a few minutes late or whatever, if you're a few hours late to your destination, hey, take the voucher, girl, get yourself a little meal voucher, go get some Starbucks, go do whatever you wanna do, and chill at the airport for a little bit, cause then you got $500 to go somewhere else. And I mean, this is a good deal to me. <laughs> All right, so you packed your luggage, you got your ticket, you're at the airport and you're in security. Let's talk about security. Please, please guys, do not wear a bunch of jewelry. Don't be wearing the most complicated combat boots or gladiator sandals or whatever to get through security. Let's keep it simple. I mean, if you can, keep it super simple. I wear leggings, I wear stuff that don't have, like doesn't have any zippers, it doesn't have anything funny like on it. I make sure that my shoes are super easy to get on and off. And I make sure that I have just packed accordingly. Like I know I'm gonna have to take my laptop out. So I'm not gonna hide my laptop in a case and shove it into my suitcase and have it all hidden from the world. Of course not. I'm gonna make sure that I have my laptop with me, even if that means carrying it in to uh, the airport with me and then just sticking it into my suitcase once I get through security. And as far as that like 311 rule, I think that's what it's called, where you have to like make sure that all your liquids are under three ounces. I do make sure my liquids are three ounces or less, um, but I don't stick them into that like one gallon size bag or one quart size bag, whatever it is. I never, ever, 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 ever have a problem getting through security, having all of my liquids and stuff in a whole different bag. It's not see-through. It's in my luggage. I never take it out. Um, don't take that as bond, you know. Maybe somebody's going to mess with you and they're going to get mad that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, but um, I do just make sure that they are the right size and I keep them in my luggage and I have no problem with it. Um, but make sure that you're not wearing a bunch of excessive jewelry or anything that's excessive. I mean, if you want to take your jewelry and stuff, that's cool just put it in a little bag and like keep it off to the side put it in your bag or something like in your purse or something and just put it on once you get through security now speaking of putting your jewelry in a bag let me recommend something to you bags bags on bags on bags on bags on bags okay I keep everything in separate little bags it makes it a lot easier to find things when you're in you know this cramped space on the plane like I know okay I want my Advil and I want my hand sanitizer so let me pull out my little bag that has those things in it and then I want to eat you know my cashews or whatever and so I'll pull out my little snack bag and I know exactly where everything is everything has a home nothing is just running about that way I can access them easier when I'm on the plane 
and I can make sure that I'm not missing anything because sometimes you're like oh well I'm sure it's like in the bottom of my bag somewhere like I lost my keys one time and I was like oh I knew they were in here somewhere and now I have a special place just for my keys so I know hey if this area is empty that means you done lost your keys again girlfriend <laughs> another suggestion that I have for you guys is when you're traveling, you know, accidents happen, people steal things, not everyone's the best person. <laughs> um, another thing that I would suggest for you to do then is to leave an ID at home. So this is my passport, and if I'm not traveling internationally, I do not take my passport. I will have my passport in my house somewhere, somewhere obvious, somewhere that I know exactly where it's at. That way, if someone were to steal my purse or I were to lose my ID or something, I could just tell my mom, like, you know, I could call her up and be like, yo, can you go to my house and overnight me my passport, please? Because because somebody's trying to play with my emotions out here. That way you always have, you know, a backup, even if it's at home, which is better, or you can just leave it with whoever, you know, would be your emergency send me my stuff person. Um, just go ahead and make sure that you have a backup passport. I do believe you can fly on a plane without an ID, but I think it's a huge pain in the butt. I'm not sure. You guys let me know your experience if you've ever done that. One thing you wanna make sure to do before you leave your house is to download anything that you might be using as entertainment. Make sure your movies are downloaded. One time I rented a movie, I rented it through iTunes, which is really the dumbest thing ever. And I didn't download it, and I didn't realize until I got on the plane that I needed internet to watch it. And like, I was like, what the heck? Like, I was trying to get my movie on while I'm on this plane. And so now I've learned, you gotta make sure to download stuff. Like Spotify doesn't work if you have not downloaded the music. So um, Spotify, Audible, and my movies, I always make sure that I download them while I'm still at home and on my Wi-Fi. That way they're available when I don't have Wi-Fi on the plane. Cause I'm really not one to pay for the internet on the plane. I used to, but I was like, this is dumb. I'm paying like $20 from internet for what? For what? For this slow internet that wants to kick me off after an hour and a half? You're rude. Speaking of internet, sometimes at the uh, airports and stuff, like the internet is just not what's up. And also at hotels, a lot of hotels, uh, you have to pay for the Wi-Fi, and I'm not really about that life. Although with some hotels, if you sign up for their loyalty program, they will let you have Wi-Fi for free, but you have to book through their website versus booking on like Expedia or Travelocity or something. So if you know that you're gonna stay at the same kind of hotel all the time, like I stay at the Hyatt or the Marriott all the time. Um, so I'm a, like a loyalty member with them, and I have like a rewards number, so I always get free Wi-Fi at the hotel. But if you don't, and you have a phone that has a hot spot don't forget that you can use that like my parents were like what's a hotspot and I'm like uh hello like I, I told my mom like what a hotspot was so that she could uh, tether her laptop to or her iPad or whatever it was to her phone so your phone can produce internet for you you can tether it to your laptop which I mean I've uploaded videos to YouTube using my phone's data so you do want to make sure you have a good data plan because I mean you are still using the data off of your phone but you're tethering them together with Bluetooth it's super easy to do you go to your settings you find it in there and then uh, you go to the Wi-Fi on your laptop or on your iPad whatever it is that you're trying to connect and then you can easily get yourself some free internet well it's not free you're paying for it it, but you know you're not paying the airport for it okay so my last tip here is for when things don't quite go the way they're supposed to go um, you know I've had lots of flights that were super delayed and it wasn't because of weather or anything it was because of like a you know, a pilot not being where he was supposed to be, or the crew basically just not being there, or the airplane just went to the wrong place, whatever it was. And it can be really frustrating, especially when you're trying to go see your boo, and they got you on the six hour delay. Like, my flights have been delayed like crazy, and I used to get upset, and I mean, I would sit there like seething, and then I would watch all these people like berate the um, the men and women at the ticket counter, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, they can't, they can't do anything. They cannot fix the plane, they cannot find the pilot, like they can update you on the status of things, but there's no point in getting belligerent with the people at the counter, so don't ever do that. What I have found to be a much better solution if I want something, you know, to to make me feel better about the fact that my flight is super delayed, um, I always just tweet them. Just tweet the airline. Let them know what flight you're on and be like, yo, I don't appreciate this delay and they will get back to you, okay? It doesn't matter if you have one Twitter follower because they will get back to you, they will talk to you, and if you throw a big enough stink, they oftentimes give you a voucher, which I don't normally berate them, but I do like to joke with the airlines and I like to tell them to like leave me gummy bears on my seat and I like to like mess around with them but 
Please do not get mad at the people that work at the airport. It's not their fault. I mean, this is a massive operation and flights cannot always be on time. That's all I have for this video. Again, if you guys want to try out Gwenny Bee, you can hit the link down there in my description box and you can get the 30 day free trial and test it out for yourself. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do and so yeah, I really do hope that you enjoyed it. This was kind of fun to like put together and everything. So um, I hope you have a great week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!